hey you know it is kind of funny we keep saying AI is a feature like it is this far away thing but it is already here isn't it it is in your filters Spotify recommendations in your chatbot you just message it at 2 a.m but I have a question whose intelligence is this really who has this I mean just think about that you train it you feed it your thoughts your preferences your your voice your everything and one day poof it is no longer yours right it lives on some server in a company you have never visited with terms and conditions you have never read and just you you're just you're just a data point oh that's a bit bad but here is where it gets interesting a bit. I work in crypto and I've been around this space for years. And lately, I've been seeing something shift, something powerful, I would say. And there are teams, real builders, real developers who are saying that, hey, what if AI could be decentralized? What if privacy was actually a feature? And that's why I really want to walk you through the crypto projects that are trying to answer those exact questions. And today, we're kicking it off with a project that's been on my radar for a while, guys. And honestly, the more I read, the more I realize I had to talk about this. It's called Ritual. It is trying to do something bold, merge AI with privacy and decentralization without losing performance, without giving up control. That sounds amazing. I just genuinely think their approach is worthy talking about, and I want you to understand it as well. So, hi everybody. If we haven't met before, I am Elif. Yes, I work at the intersection of law, blockchain, and tech. I built legal tech tools, created developer ecosystems, helped launch smart contract protocols, and audited front-end interfaces for legal risks. Oh, and probably spent way too much time explaining what ZK means at random coffee shops. Yeah, I did. <laughs> But deep down, I just really love helping people make sense of complex things and I really love them. I'm a little obsessed with where tech meets love and privacy. Rachel is building what they call a decentralized inference layer. And if that sounds like jargon, don't worry about that. Let's break it down. <laughs> you know how AI models usually live in big centralized servers? You ask a question, it gives you an answer, but everything in between is a black box. Did you know that? No transparency and there's no privacy. And absolutely no control. Rachel flips that. They are designing a network where AI inference the actual computation that runs your prompt. It happens across decentralized nodes. And these nodes actually don't just run your inputs, interestingly. They do it privately using zero-knowledge proofs, MPC, and other privacy-preserving methods. It means no one sees your data, no one owns your output, and no one can shut it down just because they don't like your question. <laughs> and let's be real, that kind of design matters though, not just for devs and crypto nerds, but for anyone who wanna live in a world where intelligence is not monopolized actually. Before you ask, yes, Ritual already raised from Polychain by the way, and yes, the team is legit, and yes, we will get into how it works right now. You might have heard people say that AI is open now. Anyone can download these big models and use them. Yes, correct. That's technically true. Models like Llama, Quen, even this crazy powerful one called DeepSeek R1. You guys can use it. You don't need permission to use it. You don't need a company's API. You can just grab them. You can do it. But here is what most people don't tell you though. Actually running them oh, is completely out of reach for almost everyone. Okay, this is the question. Like, DeepSeek R1 is really big. You would need over one terabyte of CPU memory just to load this. To really use it, uh, probably double that. Like, imagine this. One of the best AI chips out there, the NVIDIA H100, it has 80 gigabyte of memory and it costs around $25,000. To run Deepsy, oh my god, you would need 32 of them just for the chips. That's over $800,000 before you even plug anything in. That's a lot. <laughs> Most of us don't have a server farm hiding under the bed. Do you have it? I don't. <laughs> So, what do people do then, right? They use cloud inference services, third-party platforms that run the models for you. Sounds great, I know. You actually send your prompt, they send back an answer, but now they have your data. They decide the rules and your privacy, it has gone. 
Bye bye. So, how do we fix this question? That's a different one. Some people turn to this thing called SMPC, which means Secure Multi Party Competition. It splits the AI into little pieces that different uh, computers work on together without anyone seeing your prompt, actually. I know it sounds cool, but there's a huge catch. It is so slow. It is really, really slow. Oh, because AI models use a lot of complex math, it's, it just don't play nice with SMPC. And running AI this way can be a thousand times slower than normal, man. That's like asking a question and waiting minutes just to get one word back. So then, researchers got clever and they said that, wait, 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 what if we scramble the data just enough so we can copy it without full-blown encryption? And they call this permutation-based privacy. Honestly, it sounded promising. I love that. Until Ritual came along. Ritual looked deeper and found out these scrambling tricks, they weren't actually keeping anything private. Okay, there's another problem. They built a test and showed they could unscramble the data in almost no time with near perfect accuracy. So yeah, the illusion of privacy completely shattered. And that's when I realized it. This is not just a technical challenge, it's about trust, it's about building AI systems that protect us, not just serve us. Okay, <laughs> we've seen what doesn't work. I mean, a lot of things doesn't work. <laughs> Huge models you cannot run on your own. Privacy tricks that fall apart under pressure, okay, we already know that. And systems that are either super slow or not really private, or maybe they're expensive. So let's talk about Ritual, because this is where things get really interesting. Ritual is not trying to rebuild AI from scratch, of course. They are not making their own model base or launching a new GPU. Instead, they are building something more strategic, a new layer, a decentralized layer that can run AI models privately, efficiently, and and at scale. Think of it like this, you you have your favorite open source model, Llama, DeepSeek, whatever, I don't know. Normally, you would need massive hardware to use it, right? Or you would send it off to a third party service and say goodbye to your privacy. But with Ritual, you either follow the ritual or you get lost in the noise. Your prompt gets routed through a network of decentralized nodes. These nodes run the model, they do it in a way that no single node ever sees your full input. This is what it is. It's split, scrambled, and mathematically protected, which is awesome. So you get the output, but no one in the network, not even the node operators, cannot spy on what you ask. And here is the kicker, actually. It is actually fast, interestingly, because instead of relying on heavyweight cryptography protocols like SMPC, ritual mixes, statistical privacy guarantees with clever distributed design. It is like walking the tightrope between privacy and performance and actually staying on the rope, which is awesome. And this is not just theoretical. They've already shown how existing lightweight privacy methods like permutations can be broken. So actually they, they build something, something stronger a new approach to, uh, that balances privacy, scalability, and model fidelity all in one system. That's what makes Ritual special. It's just my opinion. And it's not just about privacy, as I already mentioned. It is about building something better, something more fair, more open, more human aligned, right? So what we're really talking about here is not just AI, crypto, or performance. It's about something more fundamental. Who gets to decide what intelligence looks like and who gets to use it freely? Most of the world's most powerful AI systems live behind closed door. We don't, we don't know anything. They run by a few giant companies and you can only access them if you agree to their terms. Man, I'm a lawyer, I know. Which often means giving up your data, your privacy, your choices. Some people try to build alternatives. For example, secure multi-party computation sounded promising. And it is, in theory. <laughs> but in practice, oh, it's incredibly slow. Oh, sorry.
Okay. <laughs> and math is like scrambling hidden layers with permutations. We should actually test those and prove they are not safe enough. That's what they say, and you can see it on their website. That's what said Richly part, right? They didn't just take an old method and try to make it fit. They started with a fresh question. What would an AI system look like if we built it around people, not platforms? Their answer is a decentralized layer, a kind of shared infrastructure where AI models can run across a network of nodes where no one owns your input and no one can silently watch you are doing. That's the most important one because I do care about your privacy because I'm your lawyer. <laughs> Ritual is not the only project in the space, but to me, it is one of the most grounded and honest and technically thoughtful approaches I have seen so far, in my opinion. And that's why I wanted to start this series with them, by the way. If you want to go deeper into other projects, the tools behind them, or even the hard questions no one asking, I will be here. And you know what, honestly, beyond the tech, there is always the legal layer. That part gets ignored way too often, as you already know that. Who is responsible when decentralized AI systems to make decisions. What happens when a smart contract triggers a machine learning model that misclassifies someone? Or how do we audit privacy if the model runs across multiple jurisdictions? I love these questions. These are my questions. These aren't just edge case questions. They are real. They are happening now. In the next video, I'm going to be breaking down another project that's also working at the intersection of decentralization, AI, and open infrastructure. They are, so in the next episode, I'm going to bring both sides to the table. What the tech is trying to achieve and what the law says about the ambition actually. Until then, stay curious and remember me, the feature won't just be coded, it will be negotiated guys. Wait for me, I'm gonna be there. Thank you so much, see you later.